at this point, we've had, like I said, almost 300 Swift Evolution proposals, so 280 something at this point. So there's been lots of language change from the very early days to, to now. Do you have any regrets? Any things you wished had been changed that now it's too late, it's kind of baked into the language, um, or things that were changed and in retrospect you think that didn't actually pan out like I'd hoped? Yeah, I mean, I, th there's lots of things. Um, they're generally details. So we talked about initialization, for example. Um, uh, one one super minor one that grates on me frequently is that map filter reduce don't follow the naming convention. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. It should be mapping, you know. And Filtered. Like <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so... And so things like that are really annoying. And at the time, it was a discussion about, okay, well, we want to follow, we want this to be familiar, and we want to follow um, uh, terms of art. Uh, also, Math Filter Reduce got installed before the naming conventions did. <laughs> and so they predated that. And so they were just never changed as part of Swift 3. Um, there are other things. We talked about trailing closures and the way that it works with keywords. Not great. Um, there's there's a lot of details like that that you know are, are not perfect. Um, overall, though, I think that oh, the, there's lots of lots of examples in the nitty gritty how t uh, name lookup works, for example. So one, if you want me to complain about things, uh, <laughs> one of the one, one one of the one of the important things about Swift is this notion of uh, you get modular type checking, and so if you look at a Swift function, you're required to write the type signature for the function. Okay, and not all languages are like that. Particularly, a lot of functional languages like Haskell, you don't have to write type signatures for functions. And what that means is that if you do code completion in the middle of a file, for example, in in Haskell, you have to type check a tremendous amount of the world in order to re realize what the local types are that you're working with. Whereas in Swift, you can go, you know, if you refer to a function, it has a fully elaborated type, and so you don't have to go into its body and type check it to understand the signature for a function, for example, right? And this is this is one of the things that's important for interactive compile times and Xcode experience and things like this. And so Swift is very good that way, except we kind of missed when it came with property declarations. And so in a property declaration, you can say var x equals foo parentsy parentsy, <laughs> and x doesn't have a type. And so Actually, if you refer to X, now you have to go type check what is that expression. And that expression could be a closure. That it could be an arbitrarily complicated thing. And so we lose out on some of the things like that. And so there, there are things like that. The, I mean, associate type inference, there's there's a variety of pretty nitpicky things that I think are that are not ideal. Um, a lot of those I think we can make better. But the one that is most grating is map <laughs> because it is such a... It is, it's an important thing. It's very visible. It's one of the things people learn early on, and it really cuts against the consistency in the rest of the language. So actually, I did a video with um, Sophie, my, my daughter, who did a video for UIConf in, in May, and filter was one of the things you mentioned because we're talking about how filter works. Not only does it break the naming conventions, but also doesn't work the way my brain works. Like we're filtering yep. in, in things as well as filtering out things. It's the complete inverse yep. of what you expect. And yep. You take it for granted. I take it for granted at this point. We just assume that's how it works. We're used to it. It's yep. baked into our heads now. But for everyone learning, it's just this massive speed bump. Of, why does it? Why does it do that? Uh, and you forget because you that's move on. Exactly you know? right. That's exactly right. And this is this is one where uh, making the name better, either by adding a keyword to the closure or by putting in the base name, would have been way better. <laughs> so, but you know, and and that's that's an example where. Um, if we were sufficiently motivated, we could actually add ma mapping, you know, and other things like that, form mapped, what, what, whatever the right name is, and that would make the language more consistent. We could deprecate the old names. We, we, we as a community could move forward. I think there the question is, how fast can we phase out the old names, which would not be fast because everybody uses them, but um, we could at least start by uh, nudging the world towards the new, new names if, some were, if someone wanted to push on that. Uh, one evolution proposal I often point folks to is SE56, which was from you, to allow trailing closures in guard conditions. And the reason I do this mm. is because it didn't get through, it's rejected. And it, it, the, the description is, you know, from a historical perspective, this was an oversight. It wasn't supposed to work this way. It wasn't supposed to be different to this. I forgot to eliminate the requirement when we decided to re syntax the guard else. Whoops, can we now fix that? And the answer was no. I mean, it's, it's part of the language now. That is now the de facto swift version and that's fascinating that it became 
itself through a, 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 a literal evolution. It happened over time and it changed and things happened and, and life got in the way sometimes. And that resulted in the Swift we have today. Yeah, I mean, these, these are the little things and that, that's, I'm looking at it now. This is, this is one of those really weird things that probably nobody runs into. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is one that also maybe we should re-look at in light of other changes. But, um, but yeah, I mean, mistakes happen and nobody's perfect. And um, I think that one of the interesting things about languages is that they are used by a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And so you talk about filter and how it warps your brain, right? The, the, problem, the problem with that is that that is very visible to the community at large. And I think those are the kinds of things that even though it's painful, we should try to figure out how to fix. The, the other things that almost nobody hits or they're just weird corner cases that only a compiler nerd, know, compiler nerd knows about, those are less important to me um, because they don't really uh, undermine the, the full experience of using Swift. Right.